Hey there, cats and kitties. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, I'll be discussing my thoughts on episode one of the Doctor Who spin off series, Class. For tonight, we might die. And I gotta say, man, going into this, I, I really didn't know what to expect. I was highly fearful. Based on the synopsis, you're dealing with six students in Coal Hill School, Coal Hill Academy, as it's called in the series, having been refurbished and upgraded, as we find out from the 12th Doctor. You know, like, like other than having that Coal Hill reference, six students in high school dealing with supernatural forces, alien incursions, it didn't come off to me sounding all that much like Doctor Who, but at the same time, it kind of sounded like, oh, well, it's, it's Torchwood-esque, only it's reformed down to a sort of high school format. And I didn't know what that would entail. You know, how young or old are these characters going to be? How seriously am I going to be able to take it? Will I be able to swallow it? you know, up until the point when the 12th Doctor finally shows up. And lo and behold, do I find that this first episode was gripping and entertaining and actually hella, hella awesome. I had a blast watching it. And um, it, it had everything you want from like a Doctor Who-esque show. Uh, it had scares, it had creatures, it had great characters. And I think really one of the reasons I loved it the most was because of its cast. I think the cast was all well-picked as their individual characters, but also as an ensemble. There was no individual character that outshined the rest. Um, they were all brilliant in their own ways. And you start off by meeting, uh, effectively, unofficially, April, who is this very put-upon girl who who's sidled up with having to decorate for the oncoming storm that is the prom. She has no date. She, she had actually taken the gamble of asking out Charlie, a fellow classmate who we find out through the course of the episode is actually a gay alien prince dude um, who has the, the enemies, the baddies, the creatures in this episode after him, gunning for him. And uh, it, it's really interesting. I mean, you have uh, the character Tanya who skipped grades and her mother is a, a really like workhorse attitude, utilitarian. You're not going out. You're not having fun. You're not talking to boys. You're going to learn, learn, learn. And that's all you're going to do. Um, you, you can't go to prom, all this kind of stuff. And you feel for Tanya because she is super intellectual to the point where she's actually, you know, over like a, a computer hookup, like Skype or something, you know, FaceTime. She's she's tutoring one of the fellow classmates, who is this guy, Ram, who I didn't like from right off the bat because he's really full of himself, chip on his shoulder, probably wealthy, bully-ish, very mouthy, very talkative. But he turned out in a crisis to be a bad ass and uh he loses his leg in a fight man and he throws down with creatures double his size uber uber threatening i mean i just i was so impressed <laughs> i love his character i love the disheartening quality he has when he watches his girlfriend effectively murdered by these alien creatures the shadow kin and if i can just make an aside about the shadow kin it's like shades of Pyrovile meets uh, Vashta Narada, as we've seen in Doctor Who previously. Um, also kind of reminded me of Ares, the Wonder Woman DC Comics villain, also from mythology, the, the God of War. Uh, they are menacing as all hell. They were freaky as all hell, especially the, the like lead one with the red glowing eyes and everything like that. You know, kind of like the Ood, but much, much more uh, scary and frightening. And they managed to amp that up and put it over the top with the connection that happens between the, the main sort of uh, Shadowkin baddie and April when, you know, you effectively have this teacher, air quotes, character. And I was really highly curious about her, played by uh, Catherine Kelly, who I might add looks gorgeous with her hairstyle and everything. Uh, she's a badass. She's a, a rebel warrior, as we find out. But she looked almost like Ellen Green from Little Shop of Horrors to me, which just set my heart aflutter, <laughs> you know. Um, but she's not to be trifled. This, her character, I, I didn't much like either from the get-go. Not the performance or the actress. The character is unlikable because she's such a bitch, <laughs> pardon the language. Um, but she's tough as nails. She, she's ready to fight. And she's been, for all intents and purposes, dead-legged by the scenario, which sees her character coming from the same planet as, you know, the, the alien prince, but she was captured and her people, her sect, if you will, 
um, they were all made to suffer a sort of humane punishment whereby they would be emotionally and, and you know, controllably connected in mind, in mentality, to the ruling class. And, and the prince represented the ruling class. So she is, you know, entwined with him and entirely incapable because of this of using any weapons. Otherwise, she dies. So you have the probably baddest ass, toughest character, tough as nails, not going to take any crap, uh, you know, character. And she's rendered almost ineffectual. Uh, you know, she can't do anything to fight off these shadow kin. And I just found that absolutely compelling. There's something compelling in nature with each one of these characters. You have the Ram character who I said lost the leg in fighting the shadow kin. And he was a sports star. His father's really riding on that aspect of him making a career out of football or whatever it is. And, you know, so he loses his leg. And now suddenly the doctor, you know, when the doctor finally shows up, Peter Capaldi, in all his brilliance, once again, nailing the role, uh, falling in love with him all over again. It's been months since we've seen him, since the end of Series 9 and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you know, we've still got a couple months before we have the Christmas special 2016, as of the time of this recording. He shows up and it's just like, hell yes. It was just the perfect garnish to an already delicious plate that was the entire rest of the episode, the, the entire rest of the story. Um, but the doctor effectively gives him this sort of cybernetic leg. So he's he's kind of, Ram kind of has a leg up, if you'll pardon the pun now. Um, but at the same time, this is potentially really going to endanger everything he had hoped for the future and especially his father and and i really like that each one of these characters has a parent figure that we meet that either conflicts with or supports them uh in april's case her mother has you know i think that she was in a car accident and she's been disabled she's in a wheelchair she has to really take care of her mother which is something i can relate to uh before my mother passed away she she got very ill and i had to take care of her so i felt very much for april in that effect at the same time, I felt very much for Tanya because her mother is that workhorse. She's like, you know, work, 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 study, study, study. Your homework should be done by the time I get home from work. Uh, and you shouldn't be frolicking, talking to boys, going to prom and all this kind of stuff. It's just she is so put upon. It's so sad because she's probably capable of working wonders, but she's always going to have that stifled hand holding her back in a sense from really blossoming you, you know you could see her being a wallflower much akin to april they're they're sort of cut from the same cloth but coming from two different directions and i that's one of the things i really love and, and finding out more about the prince and that he has this uh you know box basically it was shades of deep space nine with all of the orbs uh from the bajoran people where he's he's got this box of souls for all intents and purposes at least the mythology of their planet suggests when you die your soul then goes inside this box and inhabits it. And uh, by the end, I mean, you're told throughout, I should say, that, well, there was nothing in it. It was empty. But he knows much more to the effect that, no, it's it's not empty. I mean, there's nothing physical. There's nothing tangible necessarily. But there is energy. And, and there is like a, a, you know, sort of a, a wormhole to another dimension, something like that where we do see all of these little lights and fixtures, and it does speak to that idea of the energy of the soul. Perhaps there is something within it after all. And this is what, you know, the Shadowkin leader was after. We thought he was after the gun. Um, I think somebody said that at one point through the episode, that the gun that uh, effectively the teacher character... You know, I, I was confused about that as well. Like, at one point, the prince goes home, and there's the teacher, and I'm like, oh, is that his mom? <laughs> you know, like, no, not quite. Um, But effectively, she had speculated that somehow or other, this, this Shadowkin, I think, wanted the weapon. And, in fact, no, he wanted the cabinet, the cabinet of souls from this alien world that they had completely committed genocide. They wiped them all out. So... Already the doctor has a sympathetic heart, or hearts as the case may be, for the prince and this rebel warrior who are interconnected because they're the last of their kind. And it's just, that's what really spoke to me about this episode. It was absolutely brilliant. There were so many multi-layers to it, um, whether through the characters, through the story, through, through the setting. 
And the fact that it's taking place in Coal Hill School, it just, you know, again, I wish we could see in Chesterton at some point, um, or even Susan showing up, but uh, I don't know if that'll happen in a spinoff. Probably likelier to happen in a spinoff than the show proper these days, but I would love that. And um, so, yeah, I mean, I can't give it enough high praise. I actually really thoroughly enjoyed this first episode, having low to no expectations, not really sure whether or not it would be good. And damn it, it was spectacular. So um, it, it just has me that much more excited to see the, you know, continuing episodes and see what adventures and misadventures these students, these these classmates, uh, you know, these compatriots now through this, you know, sort of destructive event, what they're all going to be up against. And uh, the next episode looks gory and freaky as hell. And so otherwise, I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode one of the Doctor Who spinoff series class for tonight. We might die. And, uh, you know, love it or hate it, anything goes in the comments below. If you enjoyed it as much as I did, if it fell flat for you, just love having that conversation. And so, yeah, otherwise, that'll be pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well. And I'll catch you all later. Peace.